So a lot of people that play games like Remnant 2 struggle, especially at the beginning of the game. I've seen comments come in that suggest people are having a lot of problems. I see achievements that not many players actually have that seem rather simple when you've got experience with the game. So no, nobody is a bad player at a game like this. I just want to put that out there first and foremost. And not only that, when I've done build videos for Apocalypse Difficulty, people have said that like there's some items I use that are only acquired when you're playing on Apocalypse. So I thought what I would do is take some time out and put together the best build for beginners in Remnant 2 just to help those of you that are struggling with the game like basically learn the ropes and understand how things work like get you started off in the game with your best chance of survival dealing good damage so that you can have a fun time when you're playing the game that you purchased. So the very first thing I'm going to recommend is starting off the game with the Challenger Archetype. The reason for that is the prime perk, when you receive fatal damage, instead of going down or dying, what you're going to do is become invulnerable for 3 seconds and regenerate all of your health. Even though that can only happen once every 10 minutes, that's going to give you a lot of extra survivability. And then obviously because you're just starting the game, you're not going to have a bunch of armor, you're not going to have loads of different rings and amulets. So ignore what I've got on my build, but start the game with the challenger because it's going to give you increased survivability. And then what we're going to do is you're going to start off in your world, whether it's Losum, Narud, or Yasha, and you are going to gather 1,500 scrap, and then you're going to come back to Ward 13, and you are going to visit the NPC over here, and you'll see the medic right here, and what you're going to do is purchase the medic pin. Because then what you can do, if we go back into our archetypes, is you can have a secondary archetype and you can run the medic. It's going to give you a bunch of extra damage, ignore my numbers, that's because I've got a max 10, I'm getting 25% damage to like all damage. But you're going to start this off with extra damage, extra crit chance, and you're also going to get a skill called Wellspring. So with the challenger, the skill is going to send off a blast in front of you. If there's a group of enemies, that's going to be really, really helpful. And then the medic, if you're struggling with the bosses and stuff, then if you just pop down the wellspring, use your second skill, you're going to get this three meter radius and it's going to give you a lot of healing. It lasts for 15 seconds and it's telling me that it's applying 10 healing per second. So that's going to really, really increase your survivability. And then with the uh, archetypes themselves, as you level them up, the perks are going to get even better. The skills are going to help you out even more. And not only that, each archetype in the game has a trait that they come with. So the archetype, the challenger archetype is going to reduce your encumbrance and you're going to get like extra effectiveness basically for your healing from the medic. So then like once you've got your two archetypes set up, you've got your primary, your secondary, I highly recommend running the challenger as your primary for that prime perk. Obviously you don't have to, you can do it however you want to. Then what we're going to do is next up, we are going to complete the first world that you entered. So Losum, Narud, or Yasha, and you are going to come across the Labyrinth. And this is where you're going to get the weapons you're going to use. Well, the second weapon, which is going to be your primary. Before you've done that, something I completely forgot about is if you come up to Ford's office. So we go all the way to the back here. There's going to be a chest. And in order to crack the code of the chest, if you go to your inventory, on your flashlight, if you look at the bottom of it, there's going to be a code. I don't know if it's the same for everyone, but for me, it's 0415. So I put that in, I crack this, and it's going to give me a key. Then once we have that key, what we're going to do is come all the way over here, round past the world stone. We're going to head over in this direction. And we're just going to keep going and going and going. Then what you want to do from here is just follow it around. You can see the like area you've got to go on your mini map. And when we get to this section here, we're going to go into the cargo ship and all the way through. Keep following the route. And then when you get to this section here, you're going to use the key that you got out of the chest. You're going to open the door and there's going to be your secondary weapon, the MP60R. So you've got your archetype set up. You've started working towards their traits and stuff. And you've also got the secondary weapon, but now we're going to go get the primary weapon and the armor we're going to be using. And whilst you're doing this, save up some more scrap because there's going to be a, an amulet you buy that's going to be really, really helpful for what we're about to do. So back to the world stone, what we're going to do is now that we've completed the first world, we've got the MP60 and stuff, we're going to go visit the labyrinth. 
So when you are in the labyrinth, and to get here, what you need to do is complete the world you're in. So for an example, you're in Losum, you take down the Nightweaver boss, and next time you visit a checkpoint, you would automatically be brought to the labyrinth. Make progress through all of this. You're going to take down the cube boss. You're going to go visit the Seeker or the Keeper. I can't remember exactly what it's called, but basically a gigantic eyeball. You're going to go visit that. You're going to get the Biome Portal Key, and that's exactly what it's going to look like. And then from there, make your way back to Fractured Ingress. So it takes a long time to get this set up, but it's really, really worth it, especially for your, I don't know, your first 10 or so hours in the game. I couldn't really give it a solid time frame, but it's going to last you a very long time. This is going to be a very, very good build for survivability for people that are struggling a little bit. So once you've got the biome portal key and everything, if you make your way from Fractured Ingress up to the top of these stairs, what we're going to do is try and survive. I've got this on Apocalypse. I don't have my entire build set up. So once we're done with the enemies, it's taken me a little bit of a uh, little bit of time to get rid of that special. So once we've dealt with them, follow this path. So we're up the right hand side from Fractured Ingress from the start of it. And we've got a few more enemies, so I'll stay up here and I'll clear these out quick. Okay, so from here, what we're going to do is jump down. And we're going to run across, I believe I've just had enemies swarm behind me. I did. So when you get to this portal, instead of going through this one, you're going to come around the side of it. And if you look down off the edge, there's going to be a portal down there. So drop into that portal. And when you are here, there's going to be more enemies that spawn. So clear these out. Or in fact, we might be able to just avoid them. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to go straight through this portal. Round through the left hand side. And we're going to come left again. Then there's going to be this little parkour section. So if we jump up here. We're going to sprint and jump across to there. Then we're going to climb on the higher up ledge. And we're going to sprint again and jump across. When we get up here, what we're going to do is come to the end. We're going to crouch through this section here. And then we're going to stand up again, climb up to the next ledge. Then we're going to sprint, jump across to there. And then when you are here, if you follow this little section round, You're going to come to this section right here. So if we interact with this, this is why you need the biome portal key. So you pop that into this portal, open it up. And then once this is open, and as soon as you've gone through the loading screen, you're going to be in this section. And you are going to see, it will be here for you, it's not here for me because I've already got it. But you're going to see a weapon called the Chicago Typewriter. A really, really good assault rifle that you can use, especially early in the game. But also inside this crate in this container, you are going to find the Leto Mark II armor. So once you've grabbed that, what I'm going to do is head back to Ward 13 so I can show you exactly what we're going to do with this stuff. So now we're at Ward 13, you're going to have the Challenger, you're going to have the Medic, you will also have your primary as the Chicago Typewriter. Your secondary is going to be, if I can find it, the MP60R. The melee can be absolutely anything you want. The relic or the heart can be whatever you want it to be. Your rings and stuff can be anything. And you're going to have the Leto Mark II armor set. So if I find all these pieces and I equip them wherever they may be. There we go, Leto. And there we go, Leto as well. So you're going to see now that I've got Ultra. I like my encumbrance level is Ultra, so I flop. And it's a 75% stamina cost penalty. So if we come out of here, instead of doing a nice combat roll, I'm now going to dolphin dive. I'm going to flop all across the floor. And that's going to be really, really bad. So when you are leveling up the challenger, you're going to get the encumbrance uh, archetype trait. And that's going to help out a little bit. But then what we're going to do is cast over here in the... Uh, vendor section of ward 13 it's not a guarantee that this is going to show up all the time or well it's not a guarantee it'll show up straight away but in her store there is a chance she's going to have an amulet and if we have a look the amulet is called twisted idol so it's not going to help me out massively with a full lato mark ii armor set but it's going to increase the armor effectiveness by 30 percent and reduce the encumbrance by 15 
This isn't going to cost you too much scrap. And if it's not in the store, you can forward your time because I'm not sure if it is a half an hour refresher, but she does refresh her stock. So if you're on PC, as an example, forward the time by like two hours or something, then what you want to do once you forward it to time is, for an example, if you're starting world with Yasha, you want to use the world stone, go to Yasha, come back to Ward 13, and her stock will have refreshed. But grab yourself the Twisted Idol, because if we have a look right now, my 252 armor is giving me a damage reduction of 65.4%. If I then put this on, that armor value goes up to 302.4, and my damage reduction goes to 73.1%. But not only that, I've got a slow dodge now instead of just a straight up flop. So I can still roll, it's just a lot slower than your faster rolls, but it's not a straight up flop, so you have better evasion. And then obviously, if you do want the uh, encumbrance to be lower, like your weight level to be lower, you can just switch one of these pieces out. So if I put on, and there we go. So when we drop it to 42, it's medium. We've got a normal dodge. So the dodging isn't rapid, but it's a lot faster than it was. But with the, like our armor still at 221.4, that might be based on traits and stuff as well. But by wearing this armor set or as much of it as you can, with the Twisted Idol, lowering your encumbrance, increasing the armor effectiveness, this is going to be an incredible start to the game. Plus, you've got the Chicago Typewriter, which is a really good assault rifle. Then you've got the MP60R, which is a really, really good secondary like handgun, because it's an SMG as well. So you've got full auto weapons, you've got really good archetypes set up for healing, for the prime perk on the challenger of instead of dying, you come back with 100% uh, of your health, even though it can only happen once every 10 minutes. That is probably going to be the best start you're going to get to Remnant 2 if you are struggling. So I highly, highly recommend grabbing those bits. You've just got to make enough progress to the point where you've completed your first world, which will also unlock it for adventure mode so you can re-roll it and go and get some extra secrets and stuff. But completed your first world, got to the labyrinth, spoke to the keeper or whatever it's called, the massive eyeball at the end. You've got that biome portal key, then you've grabbed your weapons, your armor and everything, and you are good to go. With that well that the medic drops, your survivability is going to go from basically, let's just say, from 0 to 100. The amount of healing, it does state that it restores 15 health per second, but for some reason when I deploy it, because if I use it quickly now, if I go back into the character screen, it's going to say that it's only applying 10 healing per second, but that is really, really quick. And you're pretty much going to be, like, especially on the earlier difficulties like Survivor and stuff, you will be able to pretty much outheal any damage a boss is going to deal to you. So in my opinion, that is going to be your best start, like, especially for beginners, in Remnant 2. And on that note, we are going to leave the video there. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like is appreciated. If you wish to support me further as a creator, there are links in the description. Let me know your thoughts about the video in the comments. And if you want to watch more, you can click the video on screen. All support on the channel is greatly appreciated, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.